Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. This is the city. Los Angeles, California. This is the city hall. The police department's located here. It's a place of records and files. It's a place of machines. Machines to find one card in 10,000. To find one bullet in a million. Machines to find the truth. to find a lie. Radio to talk across the nation. Or across the city. All these machines and the people behind them work 24 hours a day for one reason. To protect the citizen. That's my job, too. I'm a cop. It was Wednesday, June 8th. It was hot in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of burglary division. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Bernard. My name's Friday. In the past five weeks, 17 homes had been stripped of all valuables. There was no description of the thief, no lead to his identity. We had to find him. Sorry to keep you waiting. What'll it be? Where's your menu? Uh, take a choice, either side. Oh, yeah. Mm. How's the hash? Pretty good. We're out of it. <laughs> I didn't think restaurants were ever out of hash. We are. Uh, I'll have some hot cakes, bacon, and a cup of coffee. Hot cakes, bacon, coffee. That sounds good. I'll have the same. Only I'll take plain hot cakes and sausage on the side, please. Plain hot cakes, sausage on the side. You want the coffee now? Yeah, that'll be fine. Yeah. Right away. And um, put an egg on my hotcakes, will you? Right. One egg. Over easy. Over easy. You guys are new in the neighborhood, aren't you? What's that? I said you're new around here, aren't you? Yeah, I guess so. Most of our trades neighborhood people come in for coffee and cakes on their way home from the show. Mm-hmm. I can tell you guys are new around here. You know how? No, how? No. Haven't seen you before. <laughs> sure had a lot of excitement around here. That so? Yeah, don't you guys ever read the papers? Yeah. Haven't you read about the burglaries? Been 17 of them in the last five weeks. Running the cops silly. That so? Sure, they don't know where they're going, running the cops silly. Been at least five detectives in here in the last couple of weeks asking questions. Trying to come up with something to tell them who the burglar is. Sure running them ragged. You guys haven't read about it, huh? Yeah, I think we've seen something in the papers, yeah. It's pretty funny. Just get this picture, now get it. A guy, they figure it's one fella, he walks up to the back of a house. First off, he's sure there's nobody home. Then he goes up to one of the windows and punches a hole in the screen. Jimmy's the window, walks right in, lifts the jewelry in the house and takes off, just as cool as can be. 
They must have half the cops in the force looking for the guy. Run a rings around him. You're gonna like our cakes. Yeah? Yeah, they're good. We got a kind of secret recipe here. My wife made it up. Anyway, I was talking to one of the people who had it. You know, one of the victims, a guy over in Hobart. He sells those new refrigerant things. You know, the plastic bags with the goop inside. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think I've seen them. Oh, well, he sells them. Anyways, he got knocked off. Him and the wife were at the show, and the guy broke in. He really went through the place. Took about 300 bucks worth of stuff. I think he jacked it up for the insurance, you know? Yeah. Well, the guy broke in right in the schedule. They figure he's hitting the places between 6 and 9. Now, get that. Between 6 and 9 p.m. Now, you'd think they'd be able to come up with something on him, wouldn't you? Well, how do you mean? They know how the guy works, what kind of tools he's using. They know when he does the burglaries. Knowing all that, you'd think they'd get him. Uh, this fella, the one who's a salesman, he said the cops came in and went all over his house. Took fingerprints, pictures, all that. Worked in his place for about five hours. Went all over the backyard looking for footprints. And you know what they came up with? You know what? What? Exactly nothing. All that time, all those men, and they didn't come up with nothing. You sure got the cops running in circles. Stack of wheats, bacon, hats, sausage and egg, two coffees. Won't charge you for the refills. Let's see. That comes to a dollar twenty-five. With tax, it's a dollar thirty. Mind paying in advance? Well, no, we don't, but we're not going to have time to eat now. I'm sorry. Oh, it's too bad. I'll have it for you in a minute. Oh, that's all right. We'll drop in again sometime. You work around here? Yeah, sometimes. What kind of work do you do? We're police officers. Detectives? That's right. Say, I hope you guys ain't sorry about what I said, you know, about the cops running in circles. Perfectly all right. Forget it. Uh, say, I I'd like to ask a question. Yes? About this fellow who's been pulling these jobs. Yeah, what about him? When do you think you're going to get him? When he runs out of circles. <laughs> Frank and I went back to the office and signed out for the night. Another three days passed without any leads. Saturday, June 11th, we got a report of another burglary. 9.36 a.m., we went to check it out. Yes, yeah, something you want? Lexi, Miss Dorn, please. Who are you? Police officers. Oh, I'm her. Come on, come in, come in. Don't let the flies in. Never saw so many flies this summer. Yes, ma'am. Oh, can I get you something? A cup of coffee? No, thanks. No, ma'am, thanks. Don't mind if I have some. Go right ahead. Always like a second cup of coffee. Low before this storm. I got kids, you know. Mm -hmm. I'll be just a minute. You stay right here and make yourself comfortable. Hey, Joe. Hmm? Here's one of those pictures. They cut out pieces of colored paper and paste them up. Yeah. Some French guy thought of it. I was reading about him. Wonder what this means. I wouldn't know. Wild, huh? Sure you don't want any? No, no, thank you. All right. Huh. Well, then, this is about the burglar last night, isn't it? Yes, ma'am, that's right. We have a stolen property list here. We'd like to go over it with you. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Everything they took. We'd like to check it with you if we can. Wasn't anything else in the house for him to take. Well, now, according to this list here, you have $47 in cash. Yeah, that's from the jar. Where? We got a little candy jar upstairs. Keep loose change in it. Whenever I had anything left over from my household money, I put it in there. Anthony, uh, he's my husband. Yes, ma'am. Well, whenever Anthony's got any loose change in his pocket, he drops it in there. Adds up in time. Forty-seven dollars. You're pretty sure about the amount, are you? Yes, you see, we keep a little piece of paper in the jar. Got the amount written on it so as we can tell how much we've added. Whoever stole the money didn't take the paper, just the money. Had exactly forty-seven dollars. Mm-hmm. And you list a ruby and diamond woman's wristwatch, is that right? Going to use it for a trip to Las Vegas. I beg your pardon? We were going to use the money in the jar for a trip to Las Vegas. Only needed $150 more. Now we got to start all over again. Yes, I understand. Now, how about the watch? They stole that, too. Had two rubies on one side, three diamonds on the other, little gold band. Took that, too. Anniversary present from Anthony. That's my husband. Mm -hmm. Gave it to me on our fifth anniversary, February 2nd. The diamond ring stolen, is that right? That's right. I wonder if you can give us a little better description of that. My engagement ring, solitaire. Not very big. Had it on my dressing table, one of those little ring gadgets, you know, a little block of wood with a stick in it. Put your rings on it when you're doing the dishes. Not very big. Was there anything else of value taken? No, a couple of cheap little costume pieces, bracelet, a couple of pins, nothing else worth anything, really. We'd like to have descriptions of those pieces. I can give them to you. All right, fine. You really think you're going to be able to catch the fellow that took the things? Well, we don't know. We're sure going to try. Yeah, that's what I thought. What? I've been reading the paper about this fellow. He's been breaking into houses in the neighborhood. 
All it says is that you're working on it, nothing more, just that you're working on it. That's right, isn't it? Well, yes, it is. Uh -huh. Well, I hope you do get him. Terrible the way he's been prancing around, breaking in wherever he wants to. Doesn't seem to be anything you can do to stop him. Now, according to what you told the officers last night, the burglary took place between 8 and 9 p.m., is that right? Mm-hmm, yeah, that's what I told him. How can you be sure about the time? Just him, that's all. You see, Anthony and I drove over to see my sister. We left the house here at 8, got over there, and her and her husband were having a beef about something real unpleasant. So we left, came back, got in a couple of minutes after 9, saw the place had been robbed, and called the police. Well, did you discover the burglary right away? A couple of minutes after we got home, I went into the bedroom to hang up my coat, and I could see the stuff all scattered around. Of course, I knew right off that something was wrong. Right away, I could tell. So could Anthony. He's my husband. Yes, ma'am. When you left the house, did you notice anybody loitering around near your house? Didn't see anyone. Have there been any strangers that you've noticed in the neighborhood lately? None that I can think of right now. Any strange cars? You married, officer? Yes, ma'am. Got any kids? Yes, ma'am, too. Oh. Well, you just ask your wife how much time she's got to take notice of cars driving up and down the streets, noticing whether people are loitering in front of the house or not. You just ask her, she'll tell you. You men all the time talking about how the modern conveniences help out the housework. Just zip and the house is clean with a vacuum. Swish the dishes around. They're all clean with the new soaps. Yes, ma'am. Well, maybe it's better than our mothers had it, but they still haven't come up with nothing short of a straitjacket that'll keep you from having to run after the kids all day. You ask your wife, she'll tell you. Yes, ma'am, I will. You ask yours, too, you'll see. I'm not married, Miss Dorn. Oh, then you wouldn't know. Well, you can talk to his wife. Those fellows last night, they get any clues? We haven't checked with them yet. Seems like they should be able to tell something about who did it. All that powder they was putting around, the pictures they was taking, all the excitement. Took me two hours after they left before I could get the kids to sleep. All that trouble they should have, something that's going to get the things back. Sure know one thing. What's that? The man that stole the watch. Well, she'd taken the book. The what? The record book. It was right in the drawer of the dressing table. We, well, those people at the store, if you won't find them, they will. I don't believe I understand, Miss Dorn. The people we bought the wristwatch from. They'll find him, sure. They won't let him get away with it. Ma'am? The watch. It's not paid for. Ten forty-two a.m., we started to canvass the neighborhood. For the next hour, we talked to the people in the houses on both sides of the street. None of them could add anything to the story we'd gotten from the latest victim. 12.02 p.m. We called the office and found that the other men working on the case hadn't turned any new leads. We went back to our car to return to the city hall. You fellas the cops? Yes, sir, that's right. Can we help you? I'm Ross Grant. I live down there, on the corner next to Tony Dorn. I see. My wife told me you were by the house this morning. Yes, sir, that's right. Got something maybe you can use. What's that, Mr. Grant? Well, I noticed it right off. Didn't want to say anything about it to the missus. You know, women get upset. Thought that it'd be better not to mention it. All right, sir, what is it? Night before last, Thursday, I saw the car. What car? The one I want to tell you about. I was going to go downtown and do it. Felt kind of like it was my duty, you know, public spirit. Yes, sir. What about the car? Well, it was kind of warm that night. The missus and I were sitting out on the porch in the glider, just taking the night air. That's when I saw this car go by. Didn't think much about it at first. Yeah. Must have been about 6.30, right after supper. We was just sitting there taking the air, having a glass of iced tea. And then I saw the car go by again, slow, like he was looking the houses over. Can you describe the car? Yeah, I got it written down here someplace. Car went by my house two more times that night. Four times all told. Four. Mm-hmm. Got it here in my wallet, I think. <laughs> Must have left it in my other pants. Thought sure I had. Oh, here it is, here it is. Got the license number on it, too. Mm-hmm. Think it'll help you? Well, we don't know yet. We'll have to check it. I'll call in, Joe. I haven't checked DMV. Right. Sure hope it'll give you guys some help. <laughs> the way the burglar's been running around here. Terrible. Man isn't safe to leave his house. I've been thinking about having those little bell alarms put on the windows. Mm-hmm. You know, my wife's kind of nervous. Breaks out in a rash whenever anything like this happens. Is that so? Got just about every kind of ointment in the world. Doctor says it's her mind. Says it's all in her imagination. You believe that? Well, I wouldn't know, sir. I don't put much stock in it. I used to get rashes when I'd eat fresh peaches. Don't anymore, though. Say, what's the other fellow doing? He's calling our office to find out who the car belongs to. Using the radio, huh? No, sir. He went to use the phone. Wouldn't take that long? Well, it shouldn't. Uh-huh. Well, I sure hope you get this cleaned up. Catch the fellow that's been doing it. If you don't, we're going to have to move. The way it's affecting the missus. She ain't going to be able to take it much more. Did you get a look at the man who was driving the car? No, not very good. It was kind of dark. Couldn't see too well. 
Was there more than one man in the car? Not that I could see. Might have been. I couldn't right out stare at it. Made the wife suspicious. I had to sort of glance at it on the sly, sort of. Joe. Yeah. See you, man. Yeah. Excuse me, Grant. Yeah, sure. You gonna make on it? Yeah, no trouble at all. What do you mean? Police car, homicide unit. We thank Mr. Grant for his cooperation and the attempt to help us. As a public-minded citizen, he'd done what he thought was right. But to us, it was just another lead that didn't go anywhere. During the next three days, the thief hit once more. In spite of the close surveillance we were keeping on the area, he somehow managed to get into the vicinity, commit the crime, and leave without being observed. Additional bulletins were gotten out, requesting information on the M.O. The area of the rolling stakeout was increased to 96 square blocks, two square miles. A new plan for surveillance was worked out. Under the new conditions, we were able to keep the entire neighborhood under almost constant watch. To date, the thief had stolen jewelry, money, and other personal property amounting to a little over $8,000. Every night between the hours of 5.30 p.m. and midnight, the dragnet of the area was put into effect. During the next week, no further thefts were reported in the area under surveillance. Apparently, we'd stopped the thief, but we still hadn't caught him. Wednesday, June 22nd. Hey, Joe. Yeah? We might have something. Yeah? I went down the hall with Bates and I checked all the F.I. cards that have been filed in the area we're working in. Came up with one possible. Uh -huh. He's a guy named Boyd Coughlin, C-O-F-F-L-I-N. He was stopped four times last week at different locations, but all in the same area. Uh -huh. he told the officers he was on his way home. Uh -huh. So I ran him through R&I and I and I found three Boyd Coughlins. One's back in the joint, the other two ought to be checked out. Descriptions don't fit too well. What's the address on the F.I. card? 1804 Dewey Avenue, apartment three. Well, you better get right out there. Might be something, huh? I don't know. We're due for a break. Frank and I left the office and drove out to the address. Looks pretty good, huh? Yeah. We got something to work on, haven't we? Mm hmm. It was apartment three. Right. There is no such number. talked with the apartment house manager, but she was unable to give us any information on Boyd Coughlin. She went on to say that as far as she knew, no one with the name or description had lived in the place. Other people in the building were interviewed, but none of them knew the suspect. 11.17 a.m., we returned to the office and started to check out the remaining two possible suspects. the next two days, we checked all possible sources of information on Boyd Coughlin. Saturday, June 25th, 11.14 a.m. Well, here's the last of it. Teletype from DMV, Sacramento. Yeah. That driver's license he showed for identification was a phony then, huh? Yeah. Where do we go from here? I don't know. Looks to me like all the roads are closed. I don't know, Joe. Gotta be a lead somewhere. I've gone through all this stuff and back through it again. Nothing shows. Well, at least we know how he's been getting away. Yeah? Well, from what the fellows who file the F.I. cards tell us, every time they check on him, he's walking down the street carrying a bag of groceries. Uh-huh. Tells them he's on his way back from the grocery store. Now, there's certainly nothing there to draw suspicion. No. Well, it's an awful lot of trouble to have that identification made for the Dewey Street address. Yeah. Did you check the warrant office? Yeah, nothing there. Nothing in on the APBs, nothing on the locals. I'm beginning to think there isn't a Boyd Coughlin. Well, we got a lot of good reasons to believe that there is. Hmm? 19 burglaries. Two days passed. The surveillance of the area was maintained. On Monday, June 27th, Frank and I took up our positions in the area. Another night. Well, I wish we'd get a break on this thing one way or the other, don't you? Well, you've got it made, Joe. Hmm? You're single. What's the matter? Is your wife giving you trouble? Yeah, these late stakeouts. Last night when I got home, she left me an ad she clipped out of a magazine about how to be a mailman. 
You know the kind I mean? Yeah, I've seen them. Where it said, good pay, regular hours. She had that all outlined in red. This morning, she asked me if I sent in my coupon. What did you say? What could I say? It was before breakfast. I didn't want to eat out. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope we get a break on this thing soon. If we don't, you want to take a double apartment? I don't think it'll get that bad. Let's check them. This again? That's right. Stand still. He's clean, Joe. You guys are cops, huh? Right. Want to see my identification? We do. Well, when you find what you're looking for, I've been stopped five times. Is that right? Yeah, hold this, will you? Yeah. Oh, my driver's license. Got in my wallet. Here. Take it out of the wallet. Sure. What's your name? Boyd Coughlin. Where do you live? 1804 Dewey Street, apartment 3. It's right here. Yeah, I just came back from the store. Mm-hmm. Well, we're sorry we bothered you, Coughlin. Perfectly all right. I know you're only doing what we pay you for. Tell you what, it's a little late now. To make up for any trouble we caused you, we'll take you up to your apartment. No, it's not necessary. It's right here. I'd like to put you fellas out. Well, now, don't you worry about it. No, really, I appreciate the thought, but it's not necessary. Well, you guys act, you think there's something wrong. Nothing is, is there? Uh, no, I'm just saying the way you guys act, you... Oh, never mind. How long you lived in this neighborhood, Coughlin? A little while. About how long would you say? Not long. How long? A couple of months. Mm -hmm. Look, I don't want to take up any more of your time. No reason for you guys to go with me. No trouble at all. No, I sure want to thank you, officers. It's a real pleasure to know our taxes are paying for the kind of service you've just given me. Well, it's going to get better. Huh? We're going in with you. No, that's not necessary. No bother at all. This is where you live, isn't it? Now, let's see. Apartment three, isn't it, Coughlin? Uh-huh. Doesn't seem to be an apartment three here, does it? What do you got to say about that? All right, let's go downtown. Hey, wait a minute. Let's see what's in here. Breakfast food, soap, French bread. Hey, you better take this back. It's kind of heavy for a loaf of bread. See that, Joe? Yeah, I should say. Cut right down the middle. Mm-hmm. It's kind of an unusual way to slice a loaf of bread, wouldn't you say? My, my, look there, a punch and a jimmy. Tools like that can get you into trouble, Coffin. What are you doing with them? Come on, how about it? All right, let's go downtown. I suppose you guys think you're pretty smart, don't you? No, it took us eight weeks to catch you. What's your real name? Lawrence Harris. You ever been arrested? No, first time. I should have let it go. Should have gotten out while I could have. Yeah, that's what you should have done. How are you gonna know? I figured 10 weeks and quit. Another two weeks, that's all I needed. Where's the stuff you took? My hotel room. You shoved any of it? No, it's all there. Every bit of it. But the money, I lived on that. Figured when I got enough, I'd hit for the border, sell the stuff in Mexico. We can stop on the way in and pick it up. All right. Place over on 6th, I'll show you. Okay. It all figured. All the way down the line, every angle. How about it? Answer question for me? I'll try. Is there any way to beat it? Is there any way to come out on top? Well, you know the answer to that better than I do. Huh? You tried. What do you think? On October 15th, trial was held in Department 96, Superior Court of the State of California in and for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial.
The suspect was tried and convicted on six counts of burglary in the first degree and received sentence as prescribed by law. Burglary in the first degree is punishable by imprisonment in the state penitentiary for a period of not less than five years.